welcome back to my blue jail and this is the video i've been teasing quite a while how to save a thousand dollars and you do it by protecting this paint now while the jeep's natural habitat is dirt and mud we like to keep it looking a little nice you know i had an 88 jeep wrangler and the whole front of it was just chipped up because of the flat angles and the directions the rocks come in this whole front fascia is very easy to chip up so what i did is went out and got a quote just for the front face of uh, getting a PPF job done. Paint protection film, which is this thin, clear plastic film that they put over your paint to help protect it from rock chips and other scrapes and dings and whatnot. But that can get really pricey and expensive. And the quote that I got was a thousand dollars, and that's where this comes in. So this is my easy, cheap solution, which you can already see right here. And I'm going to tell you how to do it for $15 and uh, let's get started. Now let's start off with the grocery list. This one's going to be pretty simple and in fact it's just two cans of Plasti Dip. Now for those of you who don't quite know, Plasti Dip is basically a peelable rubberized spray on colorant that can go on the top of your paint and then later uh, you can just peel it off and this layer can act very much as a protectant on that paint job. Now, don't worry, Plasti Dip has been around for years and is very well respected and will not ruin your paint whatsoever. The tools we're going to be using is pretty simple. It's going to be just a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a Torx bit, and a plastic tarp. First thing in this project is masking out the area that we want to paint, or I, what I found simply to do is just remove the front face of the Jeep. All you really have to do is remove these six plastic rivets and pull forward and the whole front face of the uh, Jeep pulls right off. Really simple. There's a nice little trick to these plastic rivets. Just get your flathead screwdriver underneath the middle part, pull it up, and out. See? You got it. Now you need to get the bottom part out by also using your flathead screwdriver and pulling it out. And repeat the process six times. The only even remotely difficult task in this whole process is removing the front mesh from the grill. And the only reason why it's even slightly difficult is because they use four different fasteners to hold this in, in in about 20 different locations. Plus the mesh itself is divided into three different pieces, so you have to take each individual piece out in a specific order. The white clips are pretty simple, you just push down and they pop right out. The Phillips and the Torx head are pretty much self-explanatory, they're just normal screws. The black retention clips are the only real difficult part and uh, it took a little finessing to get out, but they'll come out. If they don't come out right away, ask nicely with a sharp blade. Considering you have about 20 other uh, retention mechanisms on this grill, <laughs> I don't think they're going to be missed. After putting down a drop cloth, I raised the grill just a little bit using some old spray cans to uh, keep the drop cloth from sticking onto the grill itself. I also masked off the rubber seal to the hood. As I'm spraying this, note a couple of things. First, the spray can has a very thin but vertical spray pattern, so keep that in mind as you're spraying. And also, I like to hit this from a lot of different angles to try to get all the uh, coverage as even as possible. And one other thing is I'm not doing a complete full coverage on the first go, and I'll explain that uh, the reason for that in a little bit. As you can see here, I stopped proud about 80% total coverage which leaves me with a lot of basically black speckles all over my paint job. I'm going to go ahead and let this set for about 15 minutes and put on my second layer, and my second layer is going to be a nice, thick, smooth coat. And the reason why is simple, surface area. Let me show you. Now if you're spraying a surface that has a lot of vertical area, gravity is going to want to take it over and pull all that liquid down, creating drips and runs. You don't want that. Now if you've already established this roof layer, all these little spots are going to act as anchors to keep the paint on where it should be. The new layer is going to bond with the previous layer, creating a perfectly smooth finish. Now the second layer, we're going to want to get nice, thick, and smooth, and a really nice glossy finish. That way it dries nice and even and you get a really good satin finish. Here's some photos after the thicker second layer showing the nice satin smooth finish. This is all optional and up to your preferences, but I wanted a little bit more texture to it. So on the third layer, I only did about 80% coverage, leaving a lot of those bumps since I really like the textured look to it. 
be sure to give about 15 to 30 minutes between coats for a proper bond and at least a couple of hours before you attempt to put it back on the front of the Jeep. I went for about four coats myself, which took the entire contents of the can pretty much, and then started the reassemble process on the next day to get, make sure it had plenty of cure time. Putting it all back together was pretty much the reverse of taking it apart, it makes sense. Just put the three panels back in, refasten all the fasteners, and push it back onto the front of the Jeep. Now, when putting the plastic rivets back in, sometimes it's easier just to give them a nice little pinch to make a, just a little bit smaller. Push them in, and take note that the internal pin is keyed, so make sure to get in the right direction. Once all six pins are in, all that's left is to stand back and admire your handiwork and know that your front paint job is protected now. At a later date, I'll go ahead and do the leading edge of my hood, but I only bought one can and that's why I'm recommending you buy two. Now, overall, this project wasn't too difficult to do, only took a couple of hours out of my full day. And honestly, I think it really improves the look of the Jeep and it's protecting the paint job. So it's all a win-win. Now, if you like this money saving tip, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm gonna have a lot more for you in the future including how to ceramic coat your own car to protect the rest of the paint finish for less than $15. So until then, keep the shiny side up, and I'll see you on the trails.